Good evening. Tonight it's being claimed that children in Greater Manchester are being used to deliver drugs around Britain. The Stockport MP and Coffey says Fagin-like gang leaders are training them to do their dirty work. It is, she says, the next big grooming scandal. Naomi Cornwell is here with more on this, and it's Anne Coffey's not alone in being concerned about this, is she? No, she's not, because the charity Missing People says research shows that vulnerable children from our region are being targeted. And they've also found in the Merseyside and Manchester areas examples of young people being taken out of the area to deal drugs, sometimes from a very long way. And we've even found examples of young people from Greater Manchester being taken as far away as the south coast, as Devon and Dorset. And those young people who are away from home are obviously extremely vulnerable while they're away and they face huge risks. Well, now the MP for Stockport has raised this problem in the House of Commons. She's explained how these gangs operate, saying these children come from big cities like Manchester that are home to organised crime gangs and Fagin-type characters. Criminal gangs are grooming children and young people to sell drugs miles away in quiet seaside towns and quiet villages. Um, very serious drugs, Class A drugs, heroin, cocaine, and uh, this activity is underreported and it is very exploitative of the young people concerned and also very dangerous. Well, the evidence for this, she says, is in a recent report by the National Crime Agency and a report from the Home Office. And conversations with police forces across the country have led her to believe that this is a problem that's been underreported. And how does Anne Coffey suggest that this could be tackled? Well, today she's asked the Home Office Minister to introduce a type of civil order. If the police suspect that a, a, a child or a young person is, is at the start of a process of being groomed for criminal activities, they can slap an order which says you're not allowed to go anywhere near that child or make any contact with this child. If you do, you'll go back to court and you'll go to jail. Now, because this problem is thought to be underreported, Anne Coffey says perhaps the most frightening aspect of it all is that no one knows exactly how many children are involved at the moment or how many are at risk of being drawn into this. Naomi, thank you. The inquest into the deaths of the band Viola Beach has been opened and adjourned in Warrington on the same day a tribute concert was announced in their hometown. Chris Leonard, River Reeves, Thomas Lowe, Jack Dakin and their manager Craig Tarry died last month in an accident in Sweden. Stuart Pollitt reports. Family and friends of Viola Beach arriving at Warrington Town Hall this morning, hoping to find out more details about what happened to their loved ones. At the opening of their inquest, Detective Sergeant Elaine Duddle from Cheshire Police told the court the men's car was travelling along the E4 motorway 18 miles outside Stockholm. It drove through barriers to a restricted area before colliding with a raised bridge, causing severe injuries. The car then fell into the canal 25 metres below. Swedish accident investigators are looking into why the crash happened. It has since emerged that CCTV footage of the incident wasn't saved. However, Coroner Nicholas Reinberg went out of his way to praise the cooperation so far of Swedish police, saying it was as good as he had ever known from a foreign organisation. He then released the five men's bodies so funerals could take place. Tributes to the band are still visible outside venues they played in Warrington. Today it was announced a memorial concert would be held here at Par Hall on April the 2nd. Viola Beach had been due to play the venue later this month and in October. It's a celebration of their life and their music for their fans, family and friends. There has been an outpouring in the town of, as well of emotion. It's been a sad and shocking uh, news. Um, so this, I think, for the town will be um, a great tribute. All the proceeds from the concert will go to the families of the band and their manager. Those families will be hoping for more answers when the inquest resumes at a later date. Stuart Pollitt, BBC Northwest Tonight, Warrington. The police have asked staff at petrol stations to be extra vigilant in the search for Stephen Archer, wanted in connection with the attempted murder of a woman in Newton Heath. The 49-year-old woman was found with serious burns on Monday morning after being doused with petrol and set on fire. She suffered 70% burns in the attack. The police are looking for a convicted sex offender who ran away from court moments before being found guilty of raping a child. Tariq Javed from Rushome in Manchester absconded while the jury was considering its verdict four days ago. 
A transport consultant has told the inquiry into whether fracking should be allowed in Lancashire that he thinks the expected increase in traffic could cause serious safety problems. The energy firm, firm Quadrilla says the report, commissioned by some residents, doesn't take into account current accident data. The company has been refused permission to carry out fracking in Rosica and wants the inquiry to overturn that decision. Plans to double the size of Terminal 2 at Manchester Airport have been approved by the City Council. It's thought to be one of the biggest building projects undertaken in the region at a cost of £1 billion. The airport says the number of jobs there will double to 40,000 over 30 years. The Liverpool comedian Mickey Finn has died at the age of 69. He fell ill in November while appearing in Stan Boardman's play Medals. The actor Ricky Tomlinson says Mickey was as funny off stage as he was on. Experts from across the globe are gathering in Manchester to raise awareness of the health dangers posed by a common mould found in most homes. Aspergillus spores can cause potentially lethal infections in people with existing lung problems. And people could be unwittingly helping the mould to thrive by drying clothes on radiators. Peter Marshall explains. It's a simple domestic chore many of us carry out many times a month, but it could have implications for our health, especially for people with severe asthma or weakened immune systems. It's all to do with the dampness it creates, an ideal breeding ground for Aspergillus, a fungal mould. In some people, that can trigger serious infections. Are you coughing a bit? Just a little bit. It's just a dry cough. Anne Saunders from Netherton has suffered with asthma all her life. It just makes you feel really bad. You're just frightened all the time in case you get bad chest because you just can't breathe. It's frightening. Her condition was worsening. Then, seven years ago, she was diagnosed with aspergillosis. She was sensitive to the fungal mould spores. Now she's been treated with antifungal drugs and the condition is in check. I'd probably be dead if I hadn't come here. <laughs> this is as stark as that? Yeah, I know I'm laughing now, but yeah, I probably would have been, yeah. But experts at the National Aspergillosis Centre at Withenshaw Hospital believe many people with the condition aren't being diagnosed. Severe asthma is well recognised as a problem, but the link with uh, allergy to fungus is not well established in many doctors' minds and nurse specialists' minds either. And we're very keen to make sure that many nurses and doctors do think about this problem when they're faced with a difficult asthmatic patient. That's why 350 leading scientists and doctors from all over the world have come to Manchester to raise awareness and understanding that aspergillus can lead to anything from allergy-type illness to life-threatening infection. With the odd um, pair of socks or towel on the radiator isn't going to make it an awful. It's the regular business of drying your washing inside and not having the windows open, so there's no exit for all that dampness. That's the big problem. Peter Marshall, BBC Northwest Tonight. One uh, Super League result for you tonight from the AJ Bell Stadium. It finished Salford 30, Warrington 31. Doesn't come much closer than that. And throughout the night tonight, a 57-hour five-a-side game is carrying on to raise money for sport relief. Alan Shearer is captaining the Match of the Day team and the former Wales international Robbie Savage is the Five Live team skipper. Here's a flavour of what's been happening today. <laughs> Well, good luck to those who've got to play overnight in this weather. That's it for me, but let's see what the weather holds. Here's Claire. Thanks very much, Stuart. Well, I, hopefully they've got firmly lined goalkeeper's gloves because it's turning a lot colder outside tonight and into tomorrow. The Met Office has issued a warning for snow and ice tonight. Snow above around 200 metres ice during the early hours of the morning because it's likely to turn very cold with temperatures dipping close to freezing. So this is the picture as we head through the next 24 hours. It's a weather front which will hover over us tomorrow across northern England, bringing rain, sleet and snow and some strong winds. A really nasty day to be out and about and trans-pennine routes are going to see some problems with a lot of snow there. But the good news as we head through Friday into the weekend, this weather front clears off the scene. We could see one or two showers, but some brighter conditions. A cold undertuck of air coming in from the Arctic 
at least those Sundays looking a little bit better, again with a little bit of sunshine, make the most of it all change next week. For the time being, then, we're seeing the rain push across from the west, turning to snow above around 200 metres. But even at lower levels where you see some, high, some heavier bursts, you could see the odd slushy deposit here and there. Above around 200 metres, then, it's two to five centimetres of snow. As I said, trans-Pennine routes will be causing some problems tomorrow because there will be a lot of snow and a cold wind. Temperatures then dipping close to freezing. Watch out for slippery surfaces first thing. So tomorrow is going to be a grim old day. It's going to feel cold. We'd like to see some strong winds, particularly across the far north. Eventually the rain will slowly clear its way southwards. It will be a slow process. So all in all, a bit of a write-off, but a much better day on Saturday and Sunday. In a moment, your national forecast with Thomas Schaffernacker. Here's now your local summary.